Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game number one between Artemis and Cosmos. This super, super, super rubber match right in the middle of Division C. One of these teams is ranked four, one of these teams is ranked five. So no one has any idea how it's going to end up. They actually both had 19 points. Oh my God, we're already going in. So uh, quick fans, we have Battlefield of Eternity and Tempest Battle of Meta, as well as Crimson Hollow and Sky Temple. We're going into Infernal Twilight. Oh my God. Gloves and it makes me super upset. I was wearing them for the last cast and then I put them down to my cats knocked them somewhere. So I have to track them down at some other point. My apologies for appearing gloveless in front of you all. Oh my and That's not where my camera goes, kitty. <laughs> well, Ektar doesn't think I can do a good job casting. He's like, I almost just went in and did it myself. So we do go in a band on Hagra and Mephisto on Blaze, and we're going to find out the fourth band in just one second. Just one? Okay, maybe in like 10 seconds. I may have lied to you all entirely possible. Then we'll actually get into who the real, real hero players are. Here's the thing. Like, bands are cool. Bands are interesting. Hogger makes sense as a band. Hogger can kind of bounce out in infinitely within that. Oh, Dahaka, I like that. This is not a map with a lot of globals. I don't see a lot of Dahaka, but he can definitely... He kind of works as a slightly less fast Imperius that Let's is um, much more imper impervious to damage. We have Dark Horse coming in with the Falstead first and foremost, able to go all over the map. Oh my god, they are moving. They like to move it, move it. We have a Salami, a Shalinore coming out with Kael'thas. AoE big on this map. And Kael'thas a little bit better at it than Jaina, because Jaina just hits one area a whole lot. Unless Skeletal means to wander back in that area, not as useful. The crusade calls. We also do have the Jojo. Jojo's by having a bizarre adventure in the hand of mine. Jo, one of the best things with this map, because she does have the natural ability to just gather the skeletal minions up into one small area and be like, okay, kill that. I mean, Ektar, um, I wish you had said something. You could have totally jumped in with me. Uh, I would have, I would have been fine with it. But now that the game's actually started, I don't think you can actually do that. But by all means, get over here. Get over here. Would you go to have e oh etc? Interesting. Honestly, taking etc. Are you serious? And then we do have the Anduin coming out of the seven. So that's that. Etc. Is not a hero you see a whole lot. A little bit um one of these squishier tanks. That's that's like a contradiction. But he really depends on being able to hit opponents in order to kind of keep his health up. So uh, the ta gravity lamps from Kael'thas and all of the stuns that could still be coming out of the side of Cosmos could definitely spell the end of this ETC. I'm very interested to see what happens here. Yeah, that's what I, I wish you had done, uh, like come in. I would have been glad to have you along. I know I kind of picked this up last second, but that's because I can. All right, Va Valala and Chromie being the two uh, bands out. Valala. I love IAI names whenever they end like that. It's my weakness. It's my curse. So Anduin can actually save ETC from certain extent. That's probably why they picked them together, because ETC is a little bit vulnerable to stun and blow up. But Anduin can help with that a little bit. We have Odd coming with the old man, Dr. Karen, and Demon Warrior. Interesting. Actually taking the Thrall offlane before the last pick. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure why you would do that. Because the offlane, you can just, you can guarantee, why would they save their damage for the last pick? Are they playing something spicy? We also do have, uh, Demo oh, Thrall, I already said that. What? I clearly just talked about that. There's something wrong with me, guys. From order comes justice. So we do have, oh, Samuro. Interesting. That means that, huh, okay. 
Merlin to Thrall. We have a Battle of the Orc Heroes from Warcraft 3 going on. And then we're also going to have the Tassaface. I don't know why I call him Tassaface, but I literally always do. And you guys are just going to have to like, go with me on that because I'm not changing. Kind of like how I refer to them as Moonwell. The hunt is on. And the Lunara. Okay, so not actually that much stun coming out to punish the ETC. And with that, we'll go ahead and get into the game itself. Looking at the two teams, I do like the Joe a little bit better. I'm not sure. The Sombrero is going to be an absolute pain. Um, the Thrall deck... I do feel like the, the Tassar will get some value with the Lightning Orbs, so I think the scaling will come better outside of Artemis. I don't really know who to call it for, but we're going to find out. And I'll continue voting up for all of you gambling addicts out there. All right, and with that, we are into game number one, ladies and gentlemen. We have a little bit of B-stepping going on. Oh my gosh, so toxic. Not really. Obviously, we are, like, behind the gates. No one will see that. Um, representing Artemis, representing our team in Cyan. We do go ahead and have... Seven is playing the uh, Anduin. Dark Horse playing that False Dead. Arkham is playing the uh, Tassadar Jotak on Samuro. And Jotak on Samuro's clones, honestly playing ETC on the orange side of the battlefield, coming in in order to oppose Artemis and try and cement their place in this. We do go to Atha playing the old man Deckard Kane. Mind is coming in on that Johanna. Demon Warrior on the Thrall. Silver Jackal is playing the Kale Foss. And Atlantis Al is playing the Lunara. Hopefully I said that name right. I'm not 100% sure. We do go and have a rotation coming into the bottom lane of force and foremost. Honestly, moving over in order to interrupt that rotation. Let's pull back a little bit. But then it might cost them a little bit of experience. Um, it goes, and it goes in and pulls out the pulls out the cow before the cow gets into too terribly much trouble. Don't think they lost very much, but look at this orb. Look at this orb. No one's picking it up. Oh my gosh. Value. <laughs> we do go and have mind going back and forth. Never mind. Interesting. Tassar just wanted to torture these guys. Like, huh? I'm going to hurt you, and then I'm going to yield, and then I'm going to hurt you, and then I'm going to yield. Silver Jackal in a lot of trouble. Honestly, looking for this. It looks like we may have our first kill of the game. No, Silver Jackal actually survives. Nice root from the deck. It goes ahead and punishes that, and the invasion is not successful. But we do go ahead and have Artemis turning around saying, okay, well, I may not get a mage, but I'm going to darn well get a camp. What are you going to do about it? That's right. Nothing. Mine steps in. A little bit of a body block again. A stop will does prevent anything from really coming through point is capturable. It will, it will be picked up by Artemis. A little bit of experience advantage. Both teams currently level 3. Dark Horse goes ahead and gets exploded. That bird is on fire. I'm like, Ryder, I look over there and I just immediately like, yo, Artemis Senpai? I don't know why I should not try and do an accent because I'm terrible at them and possibly offensive. All right, we do go ahead and have uh, the orange team down here going and picking up. Once again, a lot of experience being left behind. I don't know whose experience that actually is, though. I wish they were color-coded so I could have a better idea. Still a slight experience edge for Cosmos at the time being, although that may be cleared out as they go ahead and get, get this camp up here. We're going to have a Shaman camp pushing across the top of the map. Currently, we do go ahead and have Thrall fighting with Jotak. Jotak definitely looking to have the advantage in this particular. Is using the Hearth trip trick, though. Go ahead and have it looks like Cosmos is going to be moving through the middle of the map. Um, Artemis is down here going at the end, getting a little bit of pressure down for the move to shrine. The shrine is currently active though, and Semro may be in a bit of trouble as we come in here. Looks like Joe Talk is high on the alert. It's trying to sidestep that gravity does actually do so, and Joe Talk will get back behind. 
Here's the problem with Summero. If you don't quite kill him, it doesn't matter because he can just use the hearth trick basically infinitely. But we do go ahead and have Mind up here going ahead and cleaning up that clamp. The uh, rest of Artemis is moving up and we're trying to oppose them. Up to nine skeletal minions so far on the side of Cosmos as Atlantis Owl was in bounce back. Is that L or AL? I don't actually know. Cosmos should have asked in the room, but you know what? All right, halfway done is uh, our Cosmosian friend. It does look like we are a full of identify up to four stacks out of 30. Interesting, I don't see that talent very often. We do have Crash Lightning up to 40 stacks. Uh, Laws of Hope 13 and Mana Attic up to 20. Static Charge only at five stacks so far and Gathering Storm up to nine. Decent bit of scale on both sides, slightly more on the side of Cosmos and the Arcane Punisher is coming out. However, while this is going on, we've got Temro just pushing the bottom lane in hard. Jump over onto Tassadar. Nice follow-up damage, and there is the root from the Decker. Mind looking in, wants to look at this uh, Protoss, but will not get it. Mercy's Punisher has been slain. Absolutely. 100% agree. True, true, true fact. Even Warrior riding his demonic mount back. Go tech down here, going ahead and getting the lower camp. Both teams kind of avoiding each other right now. Up to level sevens on both sides. Let's real quick. Ten eyes cube. All right, less zero damage done. So going back to see uh, Ruby to get extra healing. Let me move my mic. I feel like you can't hear me very well. There we go. Way better. I have a kind of preview, and I'm like, I just do not sound very like close to the mic, and that's a problem. I can fix it though. I have the technology. We do go ahead and have cam camps being picked up on both sides. Um, we're going to be moving across the middle. Meanwhile, we do have Cosmos moves down. Goes ahead and takes care of those. All right, we are up to 15 stacks on Static Charge so far. Still up to 5 on Scroll of Identify. There's a rotation that once again, they... Artemis really, really wants to get this uh, Kael'thas, but Kael'thas, his team is really good at telling them, hey, they just all went down to you, and Kael'thas goes ahead and pulls back. Exactly what you want to see. Good, 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 good communication. Speaking of good communication, we also have level 10s unlocked for both teams. We are going to go ahead and see. Deck can take stay wild and listen. Uh, Sundering, Thornwood Vine, Blessed Shield, and Pyroblast. On the other side, we do go to Blade Storm, Mighty Gust, Posh Pit, Archon, and Anduin Doesn't Know. Anyone holding to find out if they can take Holy Word Salvation, looking to see how much stun there is coming out of the opponent's opposing team. Um, however, between the uh, shield, the stay a while, and the sundering, I do think that Light Bomb is going to end up being a play. Shrine is activating. That will be a Mortar Shrine that comes up in just a second. There is the shield. Hey, remember all the times you tried to gain Kael'thas? Well, this is for that. Kael'thas comes through with a big old, big old, big old explosion. You're not getting out of this, sir. Ba -ba bang well, No, even Ragdoll? That just, oh, that incinerated him? There's no body left to see flopping around? That's also actually first blood in this game as the uh, Tassadar goes down. However, keep in mind that, oh, they actually also use Archon. That's a bit of a oops, because, yeah, Pyroblast is not available for another 70 seconds. The Tessar's already back, back up, but Archon is also down for another 60. That kind of seems like a donation of a heroic, not necessarily what you want to see happen. Okay, while I'm sitting and watching this, we just go ahead and have Artemis move down and say, okay, you're going to get the second Punisher, you're going to get a wall. Okay, have fun with that. We're going to go ahead and take your stuff. And take their stuff they do. 
There is, oh, speaking of taking a nice bind in a lot of trouble. And bind is going to go in and get picked off. Gets pushed back into towers. Armor is reduced. Honestly, goes ahead and does not let them get away. So they may not even get immortal. There is a stay a while and listen, but also stay a while and kill an old man. Hey, Kale Thos, you have survived for a very long time. Get out of here. Get dunked on, my friend. I wish you would get dunked on, my friend. Dunar does come in with a great Thornwood Vine, goes in and secures that objective, but will die for it. And it looks like this is going to be a full five-man team wipe onto Cosmos as the Punisher comes in and actually ends up um, trying to save them, but does not end up doing so. Punisher are going to get cleaned up rather quickly. And look, ye Cosmos, look what your sacrifice has earned. Do you think it was worth it? Do you think this was worth the lives of five men? They came back. It's okay. <laughs> With that being said, we do go ahead and have the Impaler camp being picked up on the side of... Well, I, I say picked up. I might be lying to you guys. Nice, nice, nice double stun. Blood Bomb does come out. Was actually picked up. No, actually, I lied. What did I see? Because that is... Def oh, that is Blood Bomb. I'm smart. A lot of damage on the fall step. We have Roast Chicken. We do go ahead and have ETC trying to run away, but will not be able to run far. Is escorted back to the Hall of Storms by Nexus Minions. Dark Horse goes ahead and flies. Goes a bird, 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 fly. Um, we do go ahead and have Tassar once again being the focus. But at least... No, actually doesn't even die. Hello? Tassar manages to live. He is the boy who lived. Lunara, not so much. I should actually acknowledge the fact that Lunara died. Or you'll be like, uh, streamer! Hiltok running in, wants to get this Silver Jackal. It might get it. We've got a very, very, very committed. Meanwhile, up the top of the map, we do go to have Thrall going ahead and securing this. Surprisingly, actually aiming at the uh, less damaging minion first. I've always been told to always start with these two, but you know what? Both teams kind of shirking about and avoiding one another at the time being. They are looking for another gank. The, these teams are both gank happy. They're gank festivals. And speaking of which... Demon Warrior is running and being like, Come forget, protect me! But uh, protect them, they won't. All right, nice little light bomb comes in. Light bomb catches two people. James Silver Jackal. There is a nice day while and listen. Uh, we do not yet have thrall back, so this is not an engagement they should be taking. Mind is still going in though. Mind does not care. Says it's four versus five. That means there's more people for us to kill. Uh, honestly, goes in, goes in, gets a double dance. They can dance if they want to. They can leave their bodies behind because mind won't live. And if he won't live, then that's a corpse you'll find. <laughs> I have entirely too much fun. I'm sure I'm not the best caster, but you know what? Darn it, I'm the caster that has the most fun. And that's what matters. Honestly going through it, and it does look like we're going to have a Frozen Punisher coming out on the side of Artemis. They are uh, almost two levels in advance, up to uh, level 18. Knock, 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 And with that said, we go ahead and have everyone kind of moving through, doing a lot of damage done. Um, no real chance at this. We do have some row in the middle being dead ganked upon a little bit, but it's going to split apart. Go talk going to be a okay. Gosh, no right. He is doing okay. Uh -huh. Blue team has summoned a frozen punisher. 
Towards the Punisher's gonna come down the top lane. There are a lot there are four members of Artemis up here to defend that. We do go and have the stun going onto mine. Does actually miss the iron skin and does have to stay for the full duration of the stun. Also, we do have the frozen frostiness coming down and shutting off the top four. Here we go ahead and have the Punisher moving through. We're going to go and just do a big old jump. Once again, Johanna does not get the iron skin off. Slight unforge. But thankfully, though, the frost has not come out for a little bit, and so the towers get a lot of free damage into this. All right, nice, nice, nice. The, um... Stun hit ETC, but there was immediately pull up. Honestly, moving in, looking for a, and does get a three-person mosh, but it's very, very low. There went the, I actually thought that gravity lapse hit, but we do instead have a lot of damage. The pyroblast goes in and crack a crack a boom goes the dynamite and boom goes roast chicken. We're gonna be eating well tonight on the US corpses of Artemis as Cosmos moves back across the map. They have suffered a lot of damage. They have not gotten a huge amount of value, but they've gotten two kills and they have a momentary. They have a time to go ahead and take over the map. They're moving in. They're like, no, you cannot have this camp. This camp belongs to us. This camp belongs to Cosmos. Samro is down here. This is the next place their opponents will be going. But Samro does get away, it looks like. Although he's kind of running straight towards the enemy team. Um, you guys should not be fighting this. It is five versus three at the moment. And the middle fort goes down, but level 20s are unlocked on the side of Artemis. They're going to go ahead and pick up Wind Strider for the Samuro. Wind Tunnel, basically a very windy team uh, for the False Dead. Death Metal, Wind Metal for the uh, ETC. Twilight Wind Dawn for the uh, uh, Tassadar. And Windy Censure for the uh, Anduin. All members are back. We are relatively close to level 20, about 80% uh, of the level away. However, this Thrall um, definitely does stuck around a little bit too long and is going to go in and get splatted. It looks like they will trade middle forts as Artemis goes ahead and just immediately takes back back. Say, hey, we do not like having our forts smooshed. How about you get your forts smooshed? We're going to have mine looking for that, shirking around. Both teams currently looking for an opportunity. Samro is, Samro is such a good map for the, or a good pick for the teams that play like this because it's so hard to actually gank him. All right, no rotation for Artemis coming just yet. We do go ahead and have a Mortar Punisher coming in in the middle shrine. It looks like they are just giving up this bottom. And so no forts remain. Both teams have actually lost all three of their forts for the time being. And we got Silver Jackal moving in. They are starting and they're not all there. Oh, two of them actually take a little bit of damage from that Pyro or that um, Flame Strike. A Shalinore. All right, we are up to 24. Definitely an advantage for Artemis right now. They need to go in there. It looks like Honest is looking for that. Um, oh, there it goes ahead and quite a bit. Um, we do go ahead and take a lot of damage. There is the wind tunnel coming out, but the uh, False Head and the Lunara both go down. Woodland creatures falling all over the place. Next target is going to go ahead and be Thrall, and Thrall gets eliminated. Thrall goes ahead and goes back to his ancestors, or leads back to beyond Fall Hall of Storms. As we have the Mortar Punisher coming out, we're going to start walking down the middle lane and heading straight into the middle one. Meanwhile, this uh, Shaman Camp is still pushing. They've gone through the wall. They are losing the Moonwell, and are just going to go ahead and move through. Jotak has paused the game, so we'll go ahead to the summary screen. That way, none of you guys can come in and look at where the uh, teams are. Mouse malfunction is what Jotak says right now.
Cats are ruining everything because cats are amazing. While we're here, though, that's why it keeps getting off. I see, I see, I see. Um, looking at stats really quick, we do go in and have, in terms of healing, and when leading the way, uh, 48,000, 37,000. Oh, it looks like we're about to go back in the game. Meanwhile, in the middle end, they continue to push forward, trying to go through this. Odd thought was definitely, I, I, I don't quite know what happened there or why Odd thought. I don't think he was pulled by anything, but we do go and have Deckard going down. He's senile, he's old, he got lost. We go ahead and have um, Archon being pulled out, Twilight Archon being pulled out. We're going to do a lot of damage. We have the top four keep going down. We have the middle keep going down. Just like continuous pressure on the core. We've got a 30 seconds till Decker comes back. And I don't think the score has 30 seconds. We're going to have to do something. But they do need at least some of their team back. A lot of damage going through. Mind is just mind over matter. Mind over probability. Mind over statistics. Trying to do inconvenience. But we are down to 10%. We're down to 0%. And game number one does go to Artemis. Oh, I never even zoomed out. I was just like dead on the action the entire time. So with that, let's finish going over the stats. I went back to the draft screen. Whoops. Panic clicking, it's a thing, you guys. Uh, look, looking at the stats, we already went over the healing, and I don't think the healing's changed much in the last two seconds. But we do have Silver Jackal winning the damage race, coming out with 49,000 damage, 46,000 on that Tassadar, and 39,000 on the uh, Samuro. In terms of Soak, Samuro running away with this game. We do have 23,000 damage coming out of Samuro. Uh, 17,000 on Demon Warrior. And then, of course, Silver Jackal coming in third place. With that, let me go ahead and show you the talent screen. Here are the talents. If you love them, use them in your own games. Copy them down. Put them in your pocket. Pause the screen because I'm not going to sit here all flipping day. Um, if Kael'thas is the one you're trying to look at, well, then I guess I can... There we go. And I will see you guys for game number two. One second, and I'll be right back.
All right, just real quick. Um, we're not going into the game just yet. We actually had one of our players that uh, their comp crashed as they were leaving the game. And then as they were starting it back up, Windows was like, hey, this is a great time to update. So that's kind of what we're like dealing with right now. So sorry for the delay. However, while I'm sitting here and while, you know, we've got nothing going on, um, I do want to point out that after game number one, then first pick was chosen by Cosmos, um, which does, of course, give a map pick over to Artemis. Map uh, Artemis is going to be taking us over to two or Towers of Doom, the other T map. So, oh, and it looks like our other player is joining the lobby right now. So I don't know if they're like ready to go rub, 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 but we should be getting into the game in just a second. One moment. It's such a relief when I don't have to do everything myself. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ricardo Recliner. Hopefully I said your name correctly. Super appreciate that. And actually, that was what they were waiting on. They were like, we're not starting this game until someone primes up to the caster. Not really, but you know what? I'm going to go with that. Also, what is going on with my shirt? Chroma key? That is white text. Why do you think that it's... um? Why are... Why is my shirt being censored? I am I have a concern. Okay, that's something. It's still it still is confusing green with white, which is not not something I want to see. But we are in Towers of Doom. As mentioned, Cosmos does have first pick, so obviously they're gonna get first ban as well, because that's how that works. Let's go ahead and see what we can see. Mephisto is going to be the first one banned out. Do not want to get Mephisto this game. That is not pleasant for anyone. Trust me. Except I don't. I don't. <laughs> what? A, do you ever have a moment where you say something and then after it comes out of your mouth, you're like, wait, that? I did. Huh? Interesting. False dead being banned out. That must be a contested pick because now that the other team has first pick, they're like, we don't. Want, we do not want them to have it. Even though we would like to play it, we're not interested. This is a great map for Falstead. This is a great, this is a big map in general. I think it is the second biggest map in the map pool. I do, actually, I think technically this map is bigger than Cursed Hollow, but because there's less playable area, it effectively isn't. Because yeah, I mean, like in total square footage, I think Cursed Hollow is smaller, but you can't go into the bases. So you end up, the actual amount of the map that you traverse is smaller on this one, I believe. Dahaka, we're just like aiming at all the um, globals. Is Brightwing the next one to go? That is the question. And the answer is going to be revealed in just a second. All right, Valala is going to be taken right on out of here. So we still do technically have a Brightwing available. How much will the teams prioritize it? Because being able to take an objective and then go over to the other fight is super, super, super beneficial on this map. Although actually only on the triples, and the triples in theory only happen like once every three or four. But we do have Silver Jackal prioritizing the Chromie, not the Brightwing. Um, not a global, but definitely, definitely, definitely able to keep the other team in their place. That sounds super sus the way I say it, but you know what? Deal with it. Next set of picks. What will you do to deal with the Chromie? How that kind of tells you that you have to make sure you have hyper mobile heroes. Junkrat can boop himself over, and Lucio, of course, if you need to make your team mobile, Lucio is the obvious decision. But that does mean that Brightwing will not be actually picked up by, at the very least, Artemis.
Junkrat, and then seven for me without Lucio. All right. So you have Lucio, you have high fives. You're not going to be able to go with Stun Comp. Zul is going to be your offlaner, it looks like. Taking that very early, surprisingly early. Although, granted, waiting wouldn't really do anything. Your opponents would probably take uh, the final pick. So Zul will be your double soaker and a win. So neither team going the bright lead, despite all the bans focusing on global. Surprising. Another fun fact I like to ask chat, there are four heroes in Heroes of the Storm who have an X in their name. Zul is one of them. Do you know the other three? Or can you get to the other three, I guess I should say? Johanna is being banned out on the side of Ar Artemis. Just say, okay, this is a very, very sturdy comp. Let's try and make sure that they can't just, like, withstand our approach. We do go ahead and have uh, Diablo being banned out. So neither team actually picking up their tank just yet, but two tanks no longer available. Diablo not able to slam people into walls. There are a lot of walls, especially when you're fighting around an objective that is that takes up physical space. This isn't like Carson. Oh, hello. Jotok. Jotok seems to specialize in the annoying heroes. We have, they have the Los Vikings. And we also have the, honestly, on the Murdered going from ETC. Basically, honestly, seems to have learned how to play this game on release and never learned new heroes. Our last two is Grey Daddy with all of the damage and then the variant. I like it. That's going to do just... So you can't actually high-five someone out of a taunt, I don't believe. I don't think that works. Um... So with that, just the uh, pure amount of burst damage coming from a full chromie combo and Grey Daddy just going into your face is going to be devastating. All right, and that being said, our final pick is going to be here again. By Osh, oh, okay. I don't remember saying that name, so I was like, wait, is this a new player? But nope, definitely was playing the previous game. My mistake. So here are the teams. I really like that Lost Vikings. Lost Vikings is going to make Zul's life a living hell. Um, the Lucio, I think, I do think that Cosmos could probably win the four-man, though, so this could definitely go either way. We'll get into the game. I'll put up gambling for you guys and look forward to things. All right, coming into game number two, we do go ahead and have Artemis leading the field with 1-0, trying to go ahead and cinch this out in a 2-0 victory. Once again, they are doing their B-step bonanza. We're going to go ahead and have them represented by... Seven playing that Lucio, Dark Horse coming in on the um, Junkrat. We have Kerrigan being played by Ashkan. We have Jotak on Eric the Swift, Jotak on Olaf the Stout, and Jotak on Balog the Fierce. Lastly, oh, I actually, who did I not say? Um, honestly, is playing the Muradin. On the other side of the battlefield, we do go ahead and have Cosmos coming in. Silver Jackal playing the little dragon Chromie. Mind on the Varian, the big minion to level four. We do have Demon Warrior going around on Grey Mane. Odd Thought bouncing around on that there Anduin. And Atlantis Owl playing the Zul. I think I got everyone. Sooner or later, I will tell. All right, a little bit of fight in the Murder goes and jumps out. Um, very not able to go in very, very far. We do have Lion's Maw already up to three stacks. We do also have Deep Breathing on the Chromie. 
no stacking talents other than Stormbolt. The Stormbolt is the automatic one. You don't have to pick it. Oh, interesting. Murden actually went for third win. Did not go for the um, extra damage on Stormbolt. Obviously thinking, nope, Paragon and Junkrat have enough damage. I don't need to like do a lot of burst. I just need to survive and be able to come back into the fight. honestly come in the invasion is happening there is the pull in from the kerrigan um but they do they do actually are fighting next to uh, uh minions that have been collected so they're taking some damage mind goes ahead and gets booped out it's gonna go ahead and, and keep his mind on matters and not get targeted by this obviously at the very end the big minions still is a little bit behind and also they're actually i have experience disadvantage they end up being kept there for a little bit too long while the vikings just continue to soak like a madman interesting just needs that soak like i can't fight the vikings this is why vikings are so freaking terrifying we do go ahead and have demon warrior and jackal going back and forth um looking for a, some sort of engage just a little bit more experience they just want level four and then mind will suddenly become a lot 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 fiercer and level four is acquired they're looking for an engage looking at, to go in there is a taunt going in on the kerrigan not letting anything happen it honestly goes down to a very very low amount of health let's go ahead and take some tower shots as well I have a feeling that the Gentleman's Tower Agreement will not be upheld, and the Vikings will definitely be harassing this. All right, here are the big, big, big fight. Um, one of them is already taken. Obviously, Azul didn't even fight for it. Interesting. Ashcom taking a lot of damage, but is not going to be taken out just yet. Honestly, looking to engage into this. Zul not on his way, so it's going to say a 4v4. It looks like one third of the Vikings is coming down to help out as well. Remain very far on the flank. There's the taunt on the Kerrigan. Big combo coming out. Uh, we do have a kill. Zul gets one of the Vikings. Varian goes down. Um, it does look like Kerrigan also is going to go down. Ash Demon Warrior is going to go back. Uh, Silver Jackal is being hunted down by Honestly, but Odd Thought trying to help out as well as they can. Demon Warrior goes back and sips from the well, but it looks like Dark Horse will get this turned in. And another, that is a triple coming out of the side of um, Artemis, going down to 28 health on the core of Cosmos. I remember their names, I promise. As few pleasure words. All right, we should go and have a bit of a game. Sorry, every once in a while I get like distracted. I just start watching the game instead of casting it because I'm bad at my job. Um, we do go in and have a lot of damage going into seven right now. There is a, a huge burst of ash falling from the ground. There's a nice stun onto Varian, but of course that is Varian. Honestly, there's a lot of damage. There is the taunt. The Greyman going in, trying to get this, and we do have the Dwarf going down. There is an attack. Uh, seven looking to be the next target. Greyman is trying to get it there, but you cannot catch Lucio. It's impossible. We are of almost of three fourths of a level for the side of, of oh never mind my camera was slightly misplaced and I was adjusting my legs. Trying 
Tell me to come down here. Um, Ashcam looking to come in and try and interrupt that. We'll be able to. Meanwhile, we do have a little bit more. So, cont contestation on both sides at the moment. Level 10 is unlocked for both at almost the exact same second. There is a taunt coming in, and it looks like we're going to have a dead Kerrigan, but a dead Greymaid right behind it. Play again as the Vikings come in, and that means the entire Vikings into the area. Going ahead and using their little bodies to body block. We do have a kill on the Varian, and Silver Jackal looking not too healthy. And there comes the move-in. Kerrigan, although dead, is still doing any work done with this Ultralisk, but as that happens, the Ultralisk does go down. And there's another four shots going across and slamming into the core of Cosmos. Down to 20, halfway to death already. Looking at our level 10 talents, we do go ahead and have high five on Lucio. Uh, summon Ultralisk. Obviously, we saw that used extensively. We do go and have Avatar on the murder. Play again, coming from the Vikings, which we also saw used. The Holy Word Salvation coming out, as well as Temporal Loop, Cursed Bullet, Poison Nova, Warbringer, and Junkrat does not know. Nice bit of damage on the Odd Thought, and now comes the game of Holding Bottom. Alright. They are holding the Off Bottom very well, but the thing is, Holding Bottom only actually does something. Like, obviously you get an extra shot from the uh, Altars, but you usually want to do it so you can threaten extra damage from the Sapper Camps. But no one can actually go and get the Sapper Camp because they're all having to fight the whole time. Oh, seven looking extremely low. Caught all three blasts of that um, Falling Sand. Once more, the Ultras rise from the depths. They are moving in. Honestly, in the middle of a lot of trouble. Does get taunted. And it looks like the Dwarf is going to have to Dwarf toss right out of there. Going to survive, but not by a lot. Mind also not looking too, too, too terribly healthy. But there is the only word Salvation. Goes ahead and heals up the entire team. Honestly, in the middle of a lot of trouble. Nothing saved them this time. Dwarf still lost. toss is too late. That's going to be an end of the Dwarf. And we do have Cosmos moving out. There is a stun having onto Atlantis Al as Zul joins the battle. Bombs away, and we do go ahead and have, um, I'm not sure this will, nope, and goes ahead and denies that. Chugga chugga denied. But while that was happening, we did have an altar come up and was kept. We're down to 15 health on the core of Cosmos. Olaf the Stout is a lot less stout because he's going to be join the um, Never Eat Anything Again weight loss program. And by again, I mean for a few seconds until play again is played. I don't know what it is. The game likes Junkrat's voice lines a little bit too much. Like, I like them too, but you always hear him so much better than all the other heroes. Poor Varian just got absolutely owned there for a second. Just like couldn't move. And while he couldn't move, the second trap came in. Varian just isn't allowed to get anything done. This is the no fun police for Varian. Here comes the bombs away, looking for Silver Jackal. Once again, Anduin is just a big old king of deny. Mind looking not too healthy, though. Kerrigan goes down, but so does Anduin. Mind is going to be the next one to fall. They're going ahead and focusing that. Uh, Ossie takes a good bit of damage. Demon wear in the flanks, but not going to be able to finish that off. And maybe good enough to lose his life, as we have honestly jumping in, trying to get this Demon wear down to a couple of health. But so is, honestly. We do have Dark Horse in the side, going ahead and trying to channel this. It looks like there's no one in the area to go ahead and deny that. And once again, another four shots come across. We do have the Dwarf going down. There are seven kills or six. Actually, a kill 
lead on for the side of Cosmos, but unfortunately, definitely not a health lead on the on the uh, force because we are down to eleven health over here on their uh, Nexus. That's what his name is. Four. All right, looks like there's a little bit of fight happening up here against Jotok, 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 and Atlantis. Going in, trying to go in and get this taken care of. Um, and they will do so. The Vikings are fierce. Mining in the bushes, looking for the flank. Will get scouted out by Ashcom. Heroes, I have opened a tunnel near our core that leads to the battleground center. Use it well. All right, we do go and have a back and forth. They're trying to push in. There are these scaffold games. Oh my God, a lot. The Curse of Blood comes in and Murden just gets deleted off the map. Murden has discovered cloaking because he was there and now he's gone. He has vanished. Chrysalis comes out on Kerrigan, but Kerrigan not gonna be able to get anything done. Nice, nice, nice. We want the drum for that. Go ahead and push everyone back. Uh, Lucio goes in to try and make sure the evacuation happens, but I'm not sure they'll be able to secure all three of these, especially not without their tank. There is a taunt on the Kerrigan, and there's an absolute blow up. <laughs> Didn't have Chrysalis this time, did ya? Successful turn in on both sides. However, they have taken the top four, and that does drop it down to six. So that's the thing, boss and two sabre shots um, will end this, but Junkrat goes down as well. I've got to say, as we get towards the end of this game, this could be one of those classic Towers of Doom complete reversals, because they are going crazy with kills, and the death timers are long enough that the, the actual kill advantages mean something. Here comes quite a bit more damage coming through. Um, Demon Warrior is leading the way, doing a lot of damage to the structure. They're trying to move in, but they just can't, especially knowing that in a second it'll fall and the variant just runs forward and talks someone. So double fort conversion. At this point, we actually have a uh, fort advantage for the first time this game, coming out of Cosmos. Can they pull this back? They're down to six health. They need to be very, very careful. Their opponents are kind of like posturing up around boss. That's scary. There is Zul. Zul going to pay the ultimate price. How dare you try and do your job and double soak? That's not allowed. <laughs> and a little bit slow to respond is Cosmos, because this will get picked up and knock their core down to two health. At this point, even though that they have um, so many, if they lose either of these altars, it's game over. They only got two left. Little backdooring Viking back here. A play again was used. They were just trying to bait that out. And they do actually get the turn in. They screened correctly. And there goes the core down to zero hit points. And Artemis is going to be your champions of this playoff match. Moving on to the semifinals. Let me go and see if I can get an interview set up for you wonderful people. All right, while we wait to see if I am joined by anyone, let's go ahead and go over the stats real quick. In terms of healing, we do have Anduin leading the way, doing 63,000 healing uh, over the course of the game. 
that might be why they had to kill Leaf, because they Anduin just kind of kept anyone from dying. I do have to say, Anduin was making great plays, continuously denying Junkrat um, the ability to go ahead and connect with his ult. Lucio does come in with 48,000 healing. In terms of hero damage, we have Junkrat leading the way despite not being able to collect his ult. Oh, hello, Dark Horse. Hello. So, as I'm sure everyone figured out, we're going to join by Dark Horse. <laughs> How are you doing? How do you guys feel right now? That was quite the couple of games. Yeah, we're feeling really good. Um, last season, we went in ranked number one and lost in the first round of playoffs, which I think left a little bit of a bitter taste in all of our mouths. Uh, and this season, we had some highs and lows during the season, but felt like we had brought it back together really well in the last couple weeks uh, in particular. And I think it showed tonight, and we played really strong. Absolutely will agree. Um, no, no, no question that it, things looked out very, very, very well for you. I do have to say, going back to um, Infernal Shrines, the big thing that kind of jumped out at me about that game is that both teams just sort of, you guys were super, super aggressive for kills, and so were they. There were times I would see the entire five man looking, frankly, almost like what I see in the, some of the, like, bronze, where it's just, you don't, you don't land, you're just like, we're going here, we're going to kill this person. Oh, wait, they left? Crap. But you guys made it work. Yeah, so, I mean, the theory in that one was just that we had a combination of better, like, wave clear split push with the Samuro and uh, Falstad. And Tassadar, obviously, super fast push in the lane that he's standing in, but a global and a really good split pusher. And so we felt like we often were able to take a macro advantage that gave us a very brief 5v4. And if you can start the fight 5v4, even if their fifth gets there, like, three or four seconds later, you've got really good odds of winning it. Um, so we just tried to, whenever we saw anybody on the map anywhere, take advantage of that. Um, and if we saw them all together, like the first shrine, we just decided we didn't even want to fight. So we just went to split somewhere else and try and take more macro. Um, definitely some slip ups here and there. It's a good team, uh, but worked out well in the end. All right. Makes absolute sense. Um, another thing that kind of happened a lot is that you guys were very, very, very good. So were they, but you guys were exceptionally good at just being like, oh, they're slightly out of position. We're just going to take this structure down. And I swear I would see this like long drawn out thing where they'd end up managing to get a couple kills, push forward, get a structure. And then like two seconds later, you'd be like, well, you went to top lane. We'll just take this right back. Uh, still talking about the first game, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that was the strength of our draft compared to theirs. And we acknowledge that like in draft and as the game was starting and knew that uh, if we ever got on something, we could burn it down and then we could like global back to defend and stuff. So like the one time I think we were pushing bottom, they attempted to push top, but then I just globaled up there to the thrall and then he can't do much into a false dad poking at him. Um, just think that that was the strength of our comp and the strength of their comp was if they could get a really good lined up 5v5. So we tried to only take those when we had a... Uh, a good feeling about the fight because there's something happening on the map or their positioning. All right. Definitely. I mean, much, much higher level than I would be looking at. It, that's why you're better players than I am. <laughs> um, going into game number two, the first thing I have to ask is that I love seeing and I hate playing against Lost Vikings on this map. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't banned out. Is that something you guys would be keeping in your pocket or was that just a you don't play uh, a whole lot so your the enemy couldn't scout it no it is uh it's known um the vikings is one of the most banned heroes against our team um but this team in particular had not chosen to ban it in either of the games we played them in the regular season or the first game of the playoffs so they were three straight games they hadn't banned them against us so we kind of went into the draft thinking that we were probably going to get away with uh the vikings and if not we had some some backup choices for what we wanted to do to shift into um and joe tack plays a really good vikings uh, i think for sure the best in the division and probably the best in the next couple divisions up too oh interesting okay i don't know how we're going to arrange it but i definitely want to see a joe tack versus derivative matchup I, I don't know who that is but i uh joe tack, joe tack is a good vikings player for sure I, I have to prop him he's my coach so there you go um is the captain of currently chasing Samuro, if that helps. But anyway, um, kind of actually reminds me of Jotak, to be honest, because he specializes in the most annoying characters in Allied the game. Allied forces, prepare for battle. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, Jotek likes a couple heroes that other people don't tend to like um, playing against, at least. You love when they're on your team, if they're good. So, last question that I have to ask. Um, towards the end of Towers of Doom, I was getting a little bit nervous for you guys because it kind of felt like their comp was really starting to come online. They were starting to just get picks every couple of seconds. Um, what did you guys, like, whenever you guys took boss, did you expect to be able to actually get away with that? Because I really kind of expected them to rotate in. And what was your plan, if so? Yeah, so we rotated up, um, calling that we were going to, uh, like, posture on the boss and start it, but be ready to leave if we saw him. Um, but then we saw Chromie showing in the bottom lane, so we knew at worst it was going to be a 5v4 because I could fly in. I had just come back up, or uh, I could get there quicker than Chromie could. I had just come back up. So it'd be like brief 4v4 into a 5v4 if they were there. And then we saw the Zool and jumped on him and killed him. Um, so then it was a guaranteed the best fight they could take is a 5v4, which they obviously want to avoid. And the boss put us within one, gives us one gives us the victory territory, and it's really, really hard to push into our team. Um, so we just had one Viking stand to channel and Junkrat throw a bunch of obnoxious traps and Murden <laughs> and Kerrigan and Lucio be annoying. And it's just, you can't, you can't push through tight choke points into that very quickly. And we use that to our advantage. Fantastic. Uh, last two questions I have for you. Firstly, is if we look at the playoff bracket, uh, da, 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 let me actually get over there real quick. Super prepared streamer, don't you know? Um, with this victory, it looks like you're going up against cool cats and kittens. Um, any, like, obviously, I'm not going to ask for what your strategy is, but any thoughts about that matchup? <laughs> uh, cool cats and kittens is a really good team. We've been in the same division as them multiple seasons now uh we were in div d together like four seasons ago or something um and then we moved up and they didn't for one season then the last two seasons we've been together in div c um and they're definitely a solid team i think our record might actually be exactly 50 50 versus cool cats and kittens in the last four four seasons three of which we've been in the same seat um league four so it's a tight matchup um they got the best of us this year uh in the regular season i believe in a 2-1 um so we'll be we'll be looking to make some small improvements from what we did in the regular season and hopefully go go play somebody uh from the other side of the bracket in the finals fantastic looking forward to it and the last question so i always ask this even though i actually think i know the answer already where does the name artemis come from and don't say the goddess of the hunt i know that uh, so our first season together was in, I think it was in Heroes Lounge, actually. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that name in NGS. Um, and we were on a free agent team and they named us the Fat Artemis, the P-H-A-T, free agent team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Artemis, and we just stuck with the name because we didn't feel like changing it. I do. And, I, I and think... if you did know that already, then, then I'm kind of impressed. I actually had heard it, yes. <laughs> I've I've been around for a while, although I've changed names a couple of times because people suck. <laughs> Sorry. But that's a story. If you really want to uh, hit my DMs, I'm not going to go into it here. Uh, but those are the questions I had prepared for you. Uh, let me go ahead and turn it over to you for the shout-outs I'm sure you want and deserve to give. Uh, sure. Uh... I give the same shout outs every time, pretty much. Uh, shout out to the team. Everybody played really well. We scrimmed against uh, TRSG this last week, actually, and they helped us out too. Um, and hopefully we helped them out preparing. It looks like they're struggling, but maybe still got a chance to win in game three of their series. I, I got it pulled up at the same time here. Oh, awesome. Um, shout out to the opposing team. Uh, they played well, both in the regular season and in, in this series, uh, and, and definitely made us work for it. And then shout out to you. We always appreciate a caster. And shout out to our wives for those of us who are married for letting us play a video game. Like, it's important. <laughs> I This is not what you said, but I, I it reminds me of a wonderful comment I got in one of these interviews where it was like, all right, um, shout out to our wives for those of us that are married, our girlfriends for those of us that aren't, and fate to hope they never meet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sure. I, I, I'll i just respond with a happily married to that one, I guess. 
Well, very, very glad to hear it. So with that, I'll go ahead and let you guys go enjoy the after party. Um, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And we'll see you next week for the semifinals. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you again for the cast. Have a good rest of your night. My pleasure. And with that, um, they said that someone's struggling in game three, but unfortunately, I don't see anyone currently streaming on NGS. Let me see if I can cheat real quick. Just want to see if they're still up. The bot messed up. That's amazing. More correctly, I actually think it is that uh, someone put their URL in wrong. Is this actually still going? If so, I will definitely come over. Yep. Okay. It's still up. We're going to go see Ghost Dunk. One second, guys. <laughs> 